So a few years ago now, there were a couple of pictures that went around the interwebs that got a lot of people talking. And of course, I'm referring to these two. The question was very simple. What color are these items? Personally, I see the shoe as gray and teal and the dress as black and blue. But other people swore that they saw a pink and a white shoe. I don't even know which bit they were referring to. And a gold and white dress was seeing the same thing, but we're not actually seeing the same thing. I mean, this whole thing is even assuming that you can see the full range of colors in the first place, or that you don't have vision impairment, or that you're from a culture where you even recognize that this is a shoe and that this is a dress. We're all looking at the same objects, but how we interpret it depends on so many things. Three main categories of factors that affect how we perceive vision are biological influences, psychological influences, and social influences. We're going to spend a lesson on each of these things, starting with biological influences. Let's have a look at how physiological makeup affects vision. Well, since the thing that helps us see is our visual system, if any part of it is damaged or deteriorates, vision will be compromised. One example is achromatopsia, a condition in which you might have partial or a total absence of color vision. Now, this is different from color blindness, which is where people have difficulty distinguishing between color, but more on that soon. Achromatopsia can occur because of trauma to specific areas of the cortex or to the neural pathways between the eye and the brain. Speaking of the eye, let's have a quick look at it again, even if just to remind ourselves of how complex this organ is. Pretty much any part of the eye can be affected, thus affecting vision as well, as we'll soon see. One common example of affected vision is with the elderly. Many of you will know older folk who need reading glasses or who might perhaps have had surgery for cataracts. With old age comes wisdom, but unfortunately a lot of other conditions as well. One reason why reading glasses become so common in old age is because of a condition called presbyopia, which is what happens when the lens starts to lose elasticity and isn't able to bend light as effectively anymore, resulting in the person having difficulty focusing on near objects. Although this condition is irreversible, it's easily treated with glasses or contact lenses. Having floaters is another condition that comes with old age, which is when you get clumps of matter that sort of appears like little specks or spots in your vision. Uh, and this happens when the vitreous humor, uh, that central sort of liquidy part of the eye deteriorates, starts to crystallize. Cataracts is something else that you may have heard of before. This is when you literally see like this cloudy spot in the lens. Uh, this happens when proteins break down in the lens and it causes vision to become um, blurred. It naturally occurs with aging, although we're pretty sure that smoking and having a poor diet are also factors. AMD or age-related macular degeneration. It's another condition in which you get uh, grainy deposits in the center of the retina, uh, which causes a deterioration of central vision. Uh, so people with AMD um, sort of have this like blurry spot right in the middle of their vision. Uh, this is one of the leading causes of vision loss in the world. And unfortunately at the moment has no known cure. And the last example is a condition that actually affects the ability of the optic nerve to transmit visual information to the brain. It's called glaucoma and in Australia more than 150,000 elderly people are believed to have it. Often people don't think too much of this, which means it doesn't get addressed and unfortunately can lead to blindness. All right, the next biological factor is a genetic. So obviously this is gonna include inherited visual disorders, uh, which means conditions get, that get passed down because of genetic factors. There's a whole bunch of examples here, including myopia, or short-sightedness, hyperopia, far-sightedness, uh, strabismus, or cross-eye, and amblyopia, or lazy eye. Glaucoma and AMD can also be partly genetic. If you're interested in how these conditions affect the eye, here's a little summary. But for our senior psychology syllabus, we don't exactly need to know how this works. Now, as well as inherited visual disorders, you can also have congenital visual disorders. Uh, that is something that's present at birth. Uh, so a few of the things mentioned before, like cataracts, glaucoma, achromatopsia, these can be congenital as well, including one of the most possibly famous visual conditions of all, uh, which is what happens when you see um, this top image like that. This condition is known as color vision deficiency, which is a genetically inherited disorder that affects how people perceive color. It's also known as color blindness, but that's not really the correct term for it. Color vision deficiency is much more common in men uh, because this disorder is caused by a mutation of a gene located on the X chromosome. Because females have two X chromosomes, that's sort of a built-in protective factor there, whereas males don't have that. Now this condition occurs when one or more of the types of cones uh, in the retina are affected. There are actually three types of cones that we have in our eyes that sort of specialize in detecting the three main colors of light, red, green, and blue. And depending on which type is affected, uh, that determines what 
a color deficiency you have. And so if only one type of cone is defected, then we'll say that that person have, has trichromacy. That person would have dichromacy if two are affected. Uh, and if all three are affected, this is the most severe type, uh, then we would say that's, then we would say the person has monochromacy. Then we would say that person has monochromacy. By the way, if you're wondering what's in this image here, it's actually nothing. Yeah, I just thought I'd put it there to scare you. Um, these next four are not nothing, however. They all um, contain numbers, which hopefully most of you are able to see. If you're not, could be something you chat to a doctor or optometrist about. Uh, but over here is the number six, the number 12 in this one, 29, and 74. This is a very famous type of colorblindness test, it's often called, uh, but it's more accurately known as the Ishihara test. And the final example of a genetic visual disorder is retinitis pigmentosa. It's leviosa, not leviosa. As the name suggests, this is something that affects the retina and occurs when protein growth um, causes rods uh, and eventually cones uh, to start to die. Uh, this will obviously lead to night blindness uh, because of the rods uh, and eventually loss of peripheral vision. So that was a summary of a whole bunch of biological reasons why people might have their vision affected. But as I and I do want to say that if your eyes are working, you know, moderately well, I think we have so much to be thankful for. Vision is such an incredible sense. And I know that I, for one, don't spend enough time being thankful for what I have. So yeah, let's be thankful for our eyes.